Hey everyone, in today's video I'd like to walk you through this mind map to talk about spatial thinking. Why the topic, you might ask, and I'm glad you asked. So in cohort 2 of the visual thinking workshop, we are creating a book on a page for the extended mind by Annie Murphy Paul. And as I was reading the book, I finally understood why Excalibrain is transforming the way I use Obsidian. So Obsidian has a beautiful graph view. When you look at your vault on the graph view, it is really a work of art. And it's also insightful. So here you can see the different colors. Greens are the notes that I imported from my previous personal knowledge management system called the brain. Reds are the Excalidraw drawings and the other colors are the other documents in my vault. And for example, what you can see here is that even though I've been using Obsidian for two years, my old notes from the brain are still in a separate cluster. Now there are many connections with the new notes, but I can definitely see that there's a part that's green and there's a part that has a different color. Also, I can see that I have Excolidraw drawings all over the place. So I can see that I use Excolidraw extensively for different purposes. Now, even though the graph view at the vault level is extremely helpful, I find the local graph view completely useless in Obsidian. Maybe if I have one or two links on a page, this is useful. But otherwise, unfortunately for me, this graph view is not very useful, particularly because I don't see the directions here. And also this graph moves around when you touch a node. So things get into different locations. It's hard to orient myself on this graph view. Now, if I look at the Excalibrain view for the same document, then here you can see that Excalibrain provides me with structure. I have the parent nodes at the top. I have the child nodes, so nodes further down in the hierarchy at the bottom. I have the lateral thoughts on the side. So these are nodes that are in a different hierarchy but are related to my note. On the lines, I have the ontology of the nodes or the connections. This means it's a description of the connection like related to, example of, source, author, etc. And then I also have different colors and icons for the different notes on this graph representing the different type of documents I'm looking at, which also helps me orient myself. And this view always looks the same for the same page. Things don't move around. It's organized in alphabetical order. I know what I need to look on this side. I know what I'm going to find up top and I know what I'm going to find down in the bottom. This gives me a spatial orientation in my world. So let's look at some of the theory behind why this works and some of the theory that I learned from Annie Murphy Paul's book. So I think the biggest learning is that we as humans have evolved to be spatial thinkers, the hunter-gatherer lifestyle, but also living on the savanna required our ancestors to have a very strong understanding of their surroundings, to be able to navigate in a spatial environment and to be intelligent in that environment. So for this reason, this approach to thinking is actually very far from natural for us. Now, writing your ideas down is one step better. And I tend to agree with Jordan Peterson that writing is thinking and it is the best thing that we can do to people is to teach them to write down their thoughts. It is a very important skill because you get your thoughts on paper and you can externalize your thoughts. You can look at them and you can manage them on paper. But 
in reality, we've evolved to be spatial thinkers and this view from the minority report is closer to what is natural for us as thinkers. So let's look at some of the additional theory. So first of all, the language we use, the way we speak, is an evidence of our spatial thinking. Because we reach for a lofty goal, the future is in front of us, or it's up ahead, the past is behind us, and we endeavor to stay on top of things. Just a couple of examples of how our language represents our spatial thinking. The ancient Greeks had this method called the method of Loki or the memory palace. According to the legend, Simonides of Sias, a Greek poet, was attending a dinner, a banquet at a large hall, and the hall collapsed. And for some reason, Simonides survived, and he was able to identify the bodies of the people who were killed in the accident by remembering who was sitting where and using this memory, he was able to identify each of the people in the ruins. Memory champions use the method of Loki to remember a long sequence of cards or numbers. They imagine a place that they are very familiar with, maybe their school, their office, their home, and they imagine walking up the stairs opening the door, meeting the doorman, walking down the corridor, opening the door to their office, looking at their colleagues sitting at the desk and so on. So they have this strong visual. And at each step of the way, they leave a piece of information they want to remember. So for example, they leave the ace at the stairs and then they leave the queen of spades at the entrance door and then they hand another card to the doorman, etc. And when they need to remember, they visually or in their mind, they walk through this area, they walk through the corridors, and they're able to retrieve information using that. And according to one of the theories, and you can have your own opinion whether this theory is correct or not, one reason why we don't remember our early childhood is because at that time we are not mobile. We are not able to move ourselves. Other people are moving us around. And as a result, we don't have something to hang our memories on. We don't have the scaffolding to remember. So let's now move on to how we can use all of this knowledge to improve our thinking. So first of all, imagine this example. Close your eyes and picture a tiger in detail. Picture its eyes, its nose, its paws, its tail. Build a strong image of that tiger in your head. And when you have it, then answer me this question. How many stripes does the tiger have? I'm pretty sure you're not able to answer that question. And that is because you didn't draw your picture, you only had a mental picture. And however detailed a mental picture is, you will not have the details of the number of stripes. And interestingly, when we think and we draw, we draw details that we don't even articulate for ourselves. It is quite often that engineers or scientists go back to their drawings and observe ideas that they weren't consciously thinking, but their hands drew those details on the picture. And this is why when you're thinking something and you're creating a drawing, you're creating a visual of that idea, then you are going to include details, you're going to include orientations of that information that you weren't articulating for yourself. And when you observe it in detail, then you're going to learn more about your thoughts. You're going to understand your thoughts in more detail. So one way to practice spatial thinking is to offload your ideas onto a physical environment. For example, put it on post-it notes or 
you can use the Excolidraw canvas for that or the Obsidian canvas or you can use a whiteboard. Really, I think your options are very broad, but offload your ideas onto a physical surface. The bigger the surface, the better, because if you need to move your torso to look at the information that is also going to trigger a different level of thinking and orientation and use this to gain an external view to become detached from your thoughts and to have an external viewpoint on them. And for example, some examples of this, I just took two pictures from two series that I was watching over the past year. One is from Manifest and here you can see the passengers on the airplane on the wall here. And the other are two screenshots from Dark where the family tree and all the surrounding information is on the hotel wall and in the wall or on the wall of the bunker. So externalizing information this way will help you think and reference this information in a different way. So now dream with me for a moment and let's see how this could be turned into a knowledge management system of the future that is spatially driven. So the first example I have in mind, I've taken this from the game Town Scraper. This is a silly little game. You can build a town for yourself. The town looks beautiful and it's a very relaxing gameplay. I like to play with this. And imagine this, that the different parts of this town are actually document stores. They are kind of like folders. And then you have your book notes, you have your project notes, your people pages, your creative ideas in different districts of the town. And maybe if you zoom in to the garden of one of my projects, then you will see that I will have the minutes of meeting in one place, the decision log in another, the project charter in one place, the design documents, the change requests, etc. in different locations. And whichever building and room I go to, I find the relevant information and I'm orienting myself in this spatial way. Or another game I like to play with or liked to play with a couple of years ago was The Witcher. And again, imagine that here you're walking in a very beautifully crafted environment. And imagine that the different characters the Witcher meets are AI generated characters that represent different documents you have in your vault. And you are having a dialogue with your documents in the vault and you're going to different towns and different houses and buildings and meeting different characters that represent projects and people and other thoughts that you might have in your vault. And then finally, this is something that I've talked about in another video, the fantasy maps of content. Imagine using a fantasy map, a fantasy land of your own vault and placing items here, placing your documents here and using this spatial representation to better understand your thoughts and ideas. So in summary, I think this is why I find Excoli Brain, even though it's very far from perfect, it is sort of a minimum viable product, a proof of concept that I created. But ever since I've created it, this has transformed the way I use Obsidian. It has given me this spatial orientation in my vault. And I find it transformational. And finally, now I understand why. So if there's one thing that you want to take away from this video, I recommend you take away this idea of externalizing your thoughts, placing them in a physical space, maybe on post-it notes or maybe on an Excolidraw canvas and start to work with your ideas in that physical space. Take a step out of just typing text and having linear documents 
Instead, create drawings, lay out your ideas in a physical space, and boost your creativity this way. So that's all I wanted to share today. I hope you found this video inspiring and helpful, and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you.